back by popular demand. Today we're doing another masterclass episode all about Lightroom Classic. And today we are focusing on the details panel, a great way to either sharpen or remove ISO grain or noise from your images. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and to this masterclass series all about Lightroom Classic. Now, we've already gone over the basics panel, tone curve, HSL, color grading and even calibration in this series. Go to the link in the description if you'd like to see the playlist. But today we are adding to that and we are focusing on the details panel in this episode. Now, the details panel controls two parts of your photo. It controls how sharp your image is, but it also controls the amount of noise found within your image. Now this is really good if you've shot a great image but maybe you've missed focus slightly or maybe you've just shot it at a very high ISO and there's a lot of grain in your image. What we can do is use the details panel to save and actually retrieve a lot of that information as well as save the overall photo. So let's jump onto Lightroom Classic to see how you can add the details panel to your editing workflow. Right guys, let's go ahead and jump on to Lightroom. And this is the photo that we're going to be using today. And that's a photo I took last year, quite late on into the day, which means I shot at quite high ISOs. If you go and have a look, I shot it at 3200 ISO, at 35 mil F2 at a 50th of a second. So this particular photo has got two problems. Firstly, as you can see, there is a lot of ISO grain in this photo. It's also not the sharpest photo either. Because I shot it at a 50th of a second, I've introduced motion blur as a photographer as well as the the group that's walking towards me there's a little bit of motion in there as well so my own fault but luckily the details panel exists which means we can fix this photo originally i wasn't going to send this specific photo to the client but luckily with the details panel i now can okay so what we're gonna do zoom out go over to the develop panel as you can see i've got it open but drop it down on the right hand side you've got your details panel now the details panel is broken up into two sections. You've got sharpening and noise reduction. And then inside noise reduction, you've got two parts, color noise reduction and luminosity noise reduction. So let's talk about noise reduction first. Now noise reduction, like I was saying, there's kind of two parts to it. ISO, uh, especially on a new digital cameras, will create luminosity ISO grain. So that's the kind of grain that you can see Obviously, if you convert it to black and white, you can still see it. And that's the kind of luminosity per pixel. So one pixel next to each other will have a slightly different uh, brightness to it. And that is ISO grain, where digital cameras will also suffer from color ISO grain. So that's that red, green, and blue blotchiness that you can sometimes see in your photo. And this photo is riddled with it. So if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see the person's face. Although we know it should be skin toned, you've got green blotches in it, red blotches, and look at that tree absolutely awful and that's because we're shooting again at high isos so let's go ahead and jump into the details panel so let's go to color noise first now color noise is broken down so we've got color here and then at the moment they're off because we haven't got it selected is detail and smoothness so what it will do is this is the main slider so this will basically decrease or increase the amount of noise. So you can see the lower we drop that down, the more noise is being kept in the photo. But if we increase it all the way to 100, there is no noise. So that's off, that's on, and as you can see. But the problem you've got is when you increase that, you're losing the details of that photo. And that's where you can go to the details panel here. So the details panel, as it says on the tin, will increase the amount of details. So how most of these sliders work, if you've got the main slider at the top, and then you can refine what that slider does using the sliders underneath it. So the details panel will affect the details of that photo. So obviously if you increase that too far, you're losing detail. So you can go back into that, refine it by going to the details slider here. And it's the same with smoothness. Now smoothness with ISO grain is, Obviously, if everything's quite blotchy, it will smooth out that blotchiness by removing some colors subtly. It's not 100%, doesn't work all the time, but it can help with refining your color ISO reduction. So you can see if I increase that, it doesn't make a big impact. If I go ahead, drop that down to almost zero, you can see if I increase that, it does a little bit of a, uh, has a little impact. I must say, this has got the biggest impact, and that's the second biggest and third biggest. So again, Main slider is the color one, increase that until you are happy and then refine those details and refine the smoothness using these sliders. Now, luminosity noise is very similar. So again, you can see this tree 
it's got this kind of blotchiness to it. Again, that's all to do with the luminosity. So we go to our luminosity slider here, increase that and it starts to smooth it out. But as you can see, it softens the photo, it makes the photo look like it's out of focus, which obviously we don't want to do. So again, we can go into the details, increase the details, as you can see here. Now if it increases to 100%, you can see there's no information in that hair. It's been completely smoothed out. So what we can do is go to the details here and increase that details. And it brings back some of that information, the shadows, highlights, again, and you can also go to contrast as well. So contrast increases the contrast, of that photo, but in a more subtle way. And again, it's all to do with refining your luminosity slider. So add in that luminosity slider, then refine the amount of details in that uh, luminosity noise and refine the amount of contrast when it comes to luminosity noise. So again, it's all to do, it's a balancing act. The more you add in of one, the more you're taking away. So if you increase the amount, or you've got lots of color noise, you, you try and remove it all, you're going to naturally lose some of the contrast and lose some of that dynamic range. It's a, it's a compromise. It is all to do with a balancing act. You know, you put weight on one, naturally the other one's going to lift. So it, you've got to balance it. And that, that's really where it comes with the details panel. Now, sharpening is very similar. And actually, I would say it is tied to noise reduction. So noise reduction obviously removes noise, but in doing so, softens the photo, which we don't want necessarily do. So if we go ahead and increase the sharpness, if we increase it all the way, we're introducing back again that color and ISO noise, which we don't want. So you wanna balance it a little bit. So although you've softened the photo, reducing ISO, we can get ahead add it in using sharpening. Now, you've got the amount here, kind of does what it says on the tin, sharpens by amount, goes all the way to 150. I don't like going above 100, to be honest with you, so I'm gonna go for 60 in this particular case. Now, radius is similar. So just imagine you've got a box. What it'll do is radius will increase the sharpness of the surrounding area of that box. So it will go from zero pixels all the way to three pixels. It will look at the area or the edges of your photo or the objects inside your photo and increase the radius of that sharpening. So you've got the radius here, starts off at 0 0.5 and you can go ahead and increase it all the way to three. It's a subtle change, but it works better when you've got a very detailed object. So uh, let's say you've got my phone here, you've got lots of kind of patterns on it. If you've taken a photo of that and you want to really want to bring out that kind of sharpness, you can increase the kind of uh, radius of that. It doesn't work well. Hair is a great example of that, where you've got lots of fine detail, you can increase that with the radius. Now, details panel, again, does very similar. If you increase that, it increases the details, but it is a very, this specific one is very powerful. It's very similar to the clarity slider found within the basics panel. If you go ahead and increase that, you can see we are really starting to add in that ISO grain. And we increase it all the way to 100. It looks like we never even removed ISO grain to begin with. So be very subtle with the details panel. Now, what you can do is use the details panel in conjunction with masking. Now, masking, the best way to describe it really is it will only sharpen areas that are meant to be sharp. Now, if you take a photo, some areas you've got, you know, you've got a depth of field. In this specific instance, obviously I've got the uh, foreground, which I want to be sharp, but we've got the background here, we've got all these trees. I don't want that to be sharp. It's specifically out of focus for a reason. And what we don't want to do is go to the details and radius and the amount and sharpen the background. It's the last thing we want. So what we can do is we can actually be specific about it by going to our masking. And what masking will do is it'll look at the photo and Lightroom will go, hmm, that's meant to be sharp and that's not meant to be sharp. There's depth of field to this photo. And what it'll do is when we increase the masking, it will remove the sharpening effect to the areas that are out of focus. So obviously we want to be, uh, you know, this is the bride and groom. We want them to be in, we want them to be sharp. So we can go to the masking panel and remove it from the background. So you can use the details panel to sharpen the areas you want, and then you can mask it out using the mask panel. And again, it goes all the way to 100. What I don't recommend is ever going to 100 of any of these sliders. It just, I think, ends up ruining a photo. If your photo is that far out of focus or got that much noise, to be honest, it's, it's gone with, and you might wanna use another software to retrieve it. Lightroom's got a maximum impact, and it can save, you know, photos that are 50% out of focus or, you know, something like that. But if it's too far, you might wanna use another software. 
I've heard Topaz is quite good for ISO grain. So yeah, might want to do a little bit of experimenting on other softwares. But for Lightroom, this is usually the best you can get. So if you're maxing it out, you just end up with a very odd effect. So overall, that is predominantly what the sharpness panel can do. Now, obviously, if you don't want to constantly zoom in and zoom out all the time, what you can do is go to this little uh, triangle here. If we drop that down, it comes up with this uh, kind of thumbnail as it were and you can see specific parts so for instance I can go ahead and click this button here let's say we want to take this person's face we can add and display it here and if I go ahead and remove noise you can see it in this little thumbnail obviously you can always zoom in to see the uh, overall impact in different parts of the photo but it helps you out with this tiny little thumbnail now what I'll do is show you the quick before and after of just using the details panel so if I do the before if I zoom in, you can see lots of ISO noise. And if I do the after, it has been removed. And I would be happy enough to send this to the client. So the details panel is really good for retrieving some photos that you think might have been lost. Again, modern cameras are really good with ISO noise, but not all the time does it look professional. So you can use the details panel to remove ISO grain as well as sharpen your photo. But remember, it's a balancing act. If you remove ISO grain, you're going to naturally soften the photo. And then if you sharpen the photo, you're going to increase ISO grain. So again, it takes a little bit of experimentation, but you might have to, you know, manually do it to per photo. But over time, you'll start to, you know, adjust to work out what looks good and what look doesn't. Some photos are just so far gone, you're not going to be able to use it. But for most photos and for photos like this, it absolutely works perfectly. And this is a photo now I'll be happy to send to the client. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can use the details panel in Lightroom Classic. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So there is my masterclass episode all about the details panel found within Lightroom Classic. As you can see, it is a very helpful panel. And to be honest with you, I use it all the time. Sometimes my photos are slightly soft or sometimes I just shot too high ISOs. As a wedding photographer, sometimes you just chucked into a situation that you weren't prepared for. And sometimes you just end up with not so great images. So you can use the details panel to save a lot of that information. And I must say, I use it all the time and highly recommend you adding it to your editing workflow. Now, if you'd like me to cover anything else in this Lightroom Masterclass series, make sure to write it down in the comments below. I love learning new stuff and I love teaching new stuff. So if you've got anything else you wanna learn or there's a specific thing that you want to know more about, make sure to write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Photo Fever and I'll catch you guys next time.